You ever noticed how the Minecraft trailers look literally nothing like Minecraft? And I mean nothing like it at all. Today, I went from this to this, meaning I'm basically now playing in the Minecraft trailer. My goal is to survive 100 days here, as well as show off how cool Minecraft could actually look. And if you want to do the same thing, I'll leave the mod pack down below, as this was easily one of my favorite things to record. So sit back, relax, and enjoy 100 days in the Minecraft trailer. Day one and this is what I'm greeted with. Everything just looks so amazing in this mod pack. I legit look like I'm filming a woodcutting trailer right now. But enough lollygagging, I need to actually get to work. I grabbed myself some stone and made some tools for the adventure. Honestly, just walking around like this makes me look like I've been hired by Mojang to literally make this video, which I swear I haven't been. This is truly how the game was meant to be played. On my walk, I gathered some food, lots of food, while just looking for a place to either settle, mine, or loot. Then when night turned things from dark to extremely dark, I slept on a hill to regain the sun. Back on my trek for a large taiga biome. I always look for one of these in any of my worlds as I build with spruce a ton and need a lot of these large trees. Instead, I found what appeared to be a small island in the middle of a river. I went around to see if the island was really an island, and sure enough it was. As a known Minecraft expert, these are pretty rare to find, so I marked down the cords in later hopes of returning. Trying to find a large taiga biome began to wear on me. I could find spruce, like, pretty much anywhere, but large biome? Oh man, this thing just eluded me. Until one faithful loaded chunk and I had found it. A giant taiga tree biome, perfect for gathering all the spruce I'll need. The weird thing about this place, though, is that it was connected to a river. No chance this place was related to the island, right? I did kind of travel in a circle, though. Sure enough, one boat ride later and only 300 blocks away from the spruce biome was this island I had found earlier. Meaning we have just found our home territory. No way I'm passing up a chance to stay here. Now that I'm settled, I wanted to go mining, and I figured the best place to do so was just start a large strip mine under the island. I dug down to Y11, then remembered I'm in 1.18.2, so haha, <laughs> negative 54, here we come. Although this mining trip wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. Now only had I not brought a lot of wood with me, I also didn't find any iron thus far. So I was really relying on two iron pickaxes to do the job. Strip mining went slow, slower than slow, and I basically got nothing for a super long time. The worst part was that now I was using a stone pickaxe to save the durability of the iron one for diamonds, which meant I was going at a snail's pace. Eventually I got out of there because nothing was happening for me. No iron, no gold, no diamonds, absolutely nothing. I just needed a cave at this point. I went to one that was going to throw me underwater, but it was fine as I had made some doors to collect the ores. Finally I'm seeing real stuff and not just deep slate. Also, glow lichen can suck my big toe, cause it glows perfectly resembling diamonds and I hate it so much. Thankfully, I eventually found a mine shaft that I was able to explore while my stuff's melted. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need armor for this place. Just imagine the amount of diamonds I could get from here. Seriously, this might be the slowest I have ever been at getting diamonds, but I wasn't giving up yet, as I now had armor to make my way to the giant cave. Wait, everything is a lie. I apparently have diamonds. I, I don't know, to be honest. I, I thought I didn't have any at this point, and I was really ready to just hunt them down, but I got some from somewhere. Well, I guess basically I'm just gonna have to go get more. Okay, please tell me this place has diamonds. Nope, just more mine shaft. Okay, cool. That makes a lot of sense. I really love 1.18. It just such a good update. We did get a few more diamonds, I swear. It wasn't all that we wanted, but we got enough to tide me over for a while. Overall, a decent mining trip for your boy, who still really needs a house. Something I might want to consider working on today. First things first, I needed to chop some trees on my island as not only do I need wood, but probably space for a base. I searched the island for a good house spot and picked one right by the water where we had discovered the island from. After the area was cleared up, I was back on a boat headed for the spruce biome. Once there, I just grabbed a good bit of it, hoping I would have enough and return home. Now on to the build of the house, which took quite a bit of time. I wanted to do a deep slate stand for part of the house as well as many different roofs. Roofs? Roofs? I have no idea. This way we have a very unique house to what we normally have done. I may have also needed to refresh my wood count at one point, but by the end of the grueling five days we had a base to call our own. Our own empty house, that is. I have no interior for this thing. The first part I worked on was the kitchen, and I may or may not have been fully obsessed with this fridge. I also made an upstairs in the kitchen for a bit of extra storage as well as some furnaces. The floor of this place began to bug me as well, so I replaced it with smooth stone, which was slow to cook, but it looked really good set here. 
I'm not too bad of an interior designerist. What's the word for that? In no, it's designer. I was I'm just stupid. On day 15 through 22, I actually stream part of the video. And if you want to see some of these worlds live, make sure to go follow the Twitch. Twitch.tv slash welcome TV. That can get complicated. Then I collected a bit of dirt and leaves to make a farm, as I need a food source and a cow source, actually. I laid out the leaves, added in the water, and now all that's left is to get more seeds, because I definitely do not have enough. Thankfully, I do have enough wheat to lead these bad boys home, and by bad boys, I mean just follow me across the water or I will eat you, boys. They made it to the pen. Now, for the next while, I went caving to get myself full diamond, and as I'm sure you all know, caving is uh, when you get stuff in the game. And I gave you that super boring explanation, because that's what it is. Like, I seriously don't think you understand how boring caving can be. So instead, I'll just give you the highlights. Diamonds, 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 leave the cave. But on my way home, instead of just getting there easily, I found a cave that went from the surface of the map all the way down to the lowest point in a Minecraft world. Like, just look at this thing for a second. It is massive. Of course, I went down it, who wouldn't? And while I was down there exploring, I ended up totaling myself around 64 diamonds. Pretty good haul. But it was seriously time to get home. We have a lot of stuff to do for the trailer makers to be proud of me. All of that including a raid, defeating the Ender Dragon, getting full netherite, which would be really awesome in this. I think that would look so cool. And of course, how can I forget, making this island into a full-on town, which I'm sure some of you will want to stick around to the end to see, because it gets awesome. Day 23, we made ourselves some diamond armor. Now I feel a little bit safer walking around town which isn't really much of a town now that I think about it, so it's time to build something, specifically an enchant tower. Now for this build, I wanted to use a little bit of deep slate at the bottom with spruce leading all the way up the tower. I even made the bottom walls out of trapdoors and fences, so it's not at all traditional. Although the next day I completely ran out of spruce, which means I'll be back in the forest. And I was here the entire day cutting down trees forever. Even with the threat of creepers blowing me up, my goal was only wood. And plenty I had now that deforestation was legal because I've declared myself a lumberjack in every single video. Now with all that wood gathered, I can include some interesting decorations around the base of the tower. And by interesting, I mean very interesting. I don't know what I was going for, but it ended up looking alright. Afterward, I made the first roof of the tower. I wanted to have a base section and then one that pushed past that roof, making it a real tower. The second tower after that, which was really small, caused many issues going onto the roof. Being this small, it was pretty hard to come up with a design, which, I mean, I probably should have thought about ahead of time, but in reality, the base of the tower is where it's all at. Because that's basically where I'm going to house the entire enchantment table. There's no way I'm fitting it at the top of this thing. Next, I went out to collect some seeds, because I really need to finish these farms. Only way I'm going to make this enchantment table is if I get these cows up to code, and right now I think I still have three. But the other plan with the seeds is kind of a little bit of decoration, as I'm going to be able to connect my house to the tower. Once I had all that I needed, I outlined the farm in leaves, but when night fell, I went to bed as my island isn't fully lit up. That morning, I made a path for my two builds to really see where I need to put the farm. Then added in the last bit of detail, outlining a small bit of leaves, fulfilling a bit of my vision for this place. But we were nowhere to complete on this enchantment tower without having a legitimate enchantment table, so I went back into my failed strip mine to gather some obsidian. I also grabbed enough to have a nether portal at my base so I don't have to return to this terrible memory. But that right there is a finished enchant table, now all I need are the bookshelves, which is gonna be a terribly different story. Dealing with that issue, I wanted my cows to grow up a little bit quicker, and we all know that cows do it better when they have a nice base. I stayed themed with my other builds so that the village would come together nicely, plus I didn't put a ton of effort into this one other than really the roof and the possible front gate design. It still looks really nice in the end of it, it's just not really a barn, at least not yet that is. We have plenty of plans for expansion on this island though. But I think we take our trip to the nether for a couple days. I ventured inside and I didn't actually hate this spawn. We were not in an amazing location, but I kind of feel safe here. Plus there's plenty of quartz for me to mine later. I explored this fiery pit for some time before finding a fortress, which I immediately grinded blazes at, not only for the eyes for the end later, but also for the potions I can brew to make my life so much easier. Upon returning back towards my portal, I traded a bit of my gold in with the piggy men, in hopes of getting leather. Now I'm sure you think I want pearls, but right now, leather is the only thing that I need. I gotta finish up that tower. I was only able to leave with around 15 of it, but that's still better than nothing after not having that much gold. And my cows are apparently still growing in slow motion. 
I dealt with that by just organizing all my stuff. I had plenty of random gear and needed to put it in a place where I'm not going to be spam clicking chests for 20 minutes. And once I was done, I placed four more bookshelves being one away from done. Still at level 30, but just not a finished tower, so that's cool. My enchant gave me a decent pickaxe, although I really wanted fortune, so I kept trying with my other one until I was able to create the god pickaxe. Something I now don't have to focus on for the rest of the 100 days. So back to the nether, and as I'm sure you can figure out, I need to enchant my gear, so levels here I come. Since most of y'all already play this game, I'm pretty sure you know what's about to happen, so I'll just, um, boom. There, now I have 42 levels, easy. Okay, on my chest plate, I got fire pro and I'm breaking, cool I guess. Only prop 4 on my helmet, no unbreaking. Finally, I got a good one with prop 4, unbreaking 3 on the legs, so that's pretty good. And lastly, protection 3, unbreaking 3, depth strata 3 on the boots. Probably my best set of enchants yet, even though it's not prop 4. I don't understand how the YouTubers get all the best enchants on their first try. I feel like I just get stiffed every time. <clears throat> Back at level 37, <clears throat> we don't talk about it. Please be good, please be good, please be good. Yes! Okay, I can actually make a good helmet and the chest plate followed. Okay, cool. Now we have a decent set of armor. Heck, I might even be able to turn this set into netherite if I get it somehow this video. Next, I wanted a task wall. I have seen many of people make task walls in their world, so I figured I could try it out. I even made it look nice. Now I just need the tasks. These are going to be including finishing the enchantment table, get full netherite armor, defeat the ender dragon, duh, mob proof the entire island, get villagers and make a trading hall for them and clear out all of the trees. So basically we can outline where I want the town. The first one I wanted marked off the list was outlining slash clearing out the town. The main reason for this is because I can see what I'm working with and have a better idea of what I want to put where. Which may or may not include a custom mountain later, we'll see. By the end of it, we had no more trees, hashtag team trees got absolutely obliterated on my island, and a much nicer looking place. Don't worry, I'll add back the trees, I swear. To outline the town, I went through and mapped out a pathway. I not only did that, but I also put down many possible builds. The first being a large barn with farms and even a chicken coop. I also really want to do a fishing port and bridge out of the island. Then of course a mountain, I kind of mentioned that earlier. But the really big thing I wanted to do was make a villager factory and or breeder. The factory build would be pretty hard since it's not going to be medieval, so I'll have to figure out a way to turn that into a medieval build. Ah, day 39. A great day. Day 39. What happened on day 39? Oh yeah, I accidentally reset my shader settings, making the game look completely awful, but I think by the end of the day I fixed it. So, um, accomplished day in a way. Next, I moved on to the Villager Breeder, which this build took a long time, as I wanted to do two separate towers, one large one and one small one to use as a balcony. Once parts of those were built, I moved on to the house, which ended up resembling a bit of a barn. The only purpose of this place is to have villagers in a central location for breeding, and I must say it turned out really, really well. Now to just get the villagers, without a village anywhere close to here. I'm gonna focus on some other stuff, like trapping these sheep. I have this weird feeling I might be needing these guys later. I then went off on a village exploration adventure conquest uh, carpe diem thing. However, on this conquest, or whatever I just said, I did find a village. However, it uh, of course had to be a deserted one. And no, that doesn't mean cake. I mean, there were literally no villagers here. I mean, they were eaten alive by zombies because this is a deserted one, but like there's no real villagers here. At this point, I just went on my ocean adventure for like ever and ever and, and ever. I was in this thing for so freaking long. You will not believe how long I sat in this ocean in a boat, just rowing for hours on end. I actually did find a village eventually though. It's not super far from my house. I believe it's connected to the giant taiga biome that I mined from. So maybe one day I can bring these guys back to base, but today was not that day. So since I'm pretty far away from home, I was going to make my factory here. I first had to remove all of the other workstations in the village, then make my own. Obviously, I wanted to get mending and unbreaking books from this, however, the real problem was my lack of breeding material, sugarcane, sticks, everything pretty much. So I trapped the villagers and was able to breed them at least one time. From there, all the babies, yes, the village was just basically babies, were funneled into a separate area where I would turn them into librarians as the adults were already Fletchers. Now it's basically a constant waiting game where I would tear down trees, trade in sticks for cold hard cash, and constantly replace lecterns to see if I can get mending. Or at the very least a bookshelf trade because I actually need books and I don't have the sugar cane like I mentioned before. Eventually I got to a point where I had enough books, but let me tell you why I was proud of this so much. Not only did I get mending and unbreaking books, but I also bred villagers, 
got them into a makeshift trading hall, made a tree farm for Fletchers, and of course had the perfect amount of materials on hand for all of this to work, as well as gathered it all from the landscape around this village. Overall, a win for me. So now that I basically have what I need, it's time to stack up and go to the end. But first, of course, we need to go back in the nether for piglin trades. I still don't have enough pearls, nor do I have enough gold, so I really just kind of went in here to go mining. I had fortune 3, so of course I mined the gold like this. Some will argue that silk touch is so much better and you can just smelt it into literally one gold ingot, but look, I don't have the time for this little Timmy, I'm using fortune. Now that I had plenty of gold, it was time to head to the little piggy men. I got two at the store and just let them trade while I continued to mine either quartz or gold. I also tried to lure in more, but apparently they are scared of the undead, so as you do, you kill them and then lure the other ones over. Let's just say no one was happy about this arrangement whatsoever. I now had basically two different species of mobs trying to kill me. Let's just say the chamber where I was breeding all this stuff had a lot of people inside of it. Ones that I had to whack and ones that gave me pearls. Once I had everything I needed, I just headed home. Before I left, I wanted to enchant a sword for the fight, you know, as you do. And I got sharpness for knockback. Not great, but it'll work. I also wanted infinity on my bow, so I lowered the enchant table down to my level, got it, but only infinity, so I was like, heck that, power to it is, I guess. I don't care. I threw my first eye and was off on the journey. It's so fun just running in one direction for a long time, isn't it? Yeah, okay, cool. Portal time. <clears throat> yeah, okay, cool. Portal time. <clears throat> We're gonna ignore what just happened there. Isn't it just much better to find it like that? Anyway, I also made another portal so I could get back. I put in the eyes, thankfully this thing had one or I was so dead, and hopped in. Time to beat up a dragon. I also wanted to test the Enderman animation, and I'm gonna tell you, this is terrifying. We went from Endermen who are on their own, really creepy, to Slenderman. Like, that's it. We just, boom, right there, we took the jump. I was not prepared for how creepy these would look. On to the real reason why we're here. I killed all the crystals and it was just me and the dragon. Since these fights are super epic and very difficult, I'll just, um, oh, hey, look at that, he's dead. Well, okay. <clears throat> I guess we're just on to an elytra now. Wrong, you get to bridge for hundreds of blocks. Isn't this just a thrill? Once I made it to a platform, I was finally on the witch hunt for a city. Holy cow, look at that thing. It's just so menacing. It's so, it's foggy, but it's cool. I like this. I went through the city as normal, looking for loot. Which I didn't get much from this thing, but that's alright, because I'm really more interested in the ship. I grabbed my prize and launched out of there, headed straight back home. I was so done with the end after having to bridge all of this. Do you see this diagonal bridge? I ignore the other one that you see over there, by the way. I was, that's literally me going back towards the end island, because I can't, I'm dumb. Day 61, I got back to work on the villager breeder, as I wanted to make it fully automatic. Since I've literally never done anything like this before, I also created a section for the babies to fall into. The plan is to have like a water tube system that leads them all the way to the factory build that I'm planning to do. As I'm imagining a factory, I think I want to do a build that I've kind of done before, just with a little bit more deep slate. However, to pull this off, I need a lot more wood, so it looks like I'm back here once again. Ah, uh, deforest- nah, honestly it's just my job at this point. Alright, time to start this build, which I swear didn't take forever. Don't check the day counter. I first grabbed Deep Slate not knowing how much I would need and probably ended up with way too much. Then I cleared out an area for the planned build because I had a way better idea for it. I first started by outlining the corners of the project with spruce and ended up with a plus sign shape. I also planned out a spot for some Deep Slate, then I got to work. The build itself took days to make, so you seeing this is like hours of effort put in by me and it's what, 20 seconds of footage? It does look way cooler this way, I'll give you that, but at least maybe like the video because um, it took a really long time to do. It's also kind of a recognizable build if you've seen many of my videos in the past, so uh, ignore that, the interior is going to be way different. Speaking of it, I have no idea how I'm going to make this into a villager trading hall. The best improvements I made were adding in the villager slots, the bottom and the top floor. Okay, well, I mean just making a top floor really helped. I also think part of said top floor will be where I funnel villagers into after I make this tube thing. I should probably start that because I have the guys who are automatically breeding. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. So if you add signs on top of or like next to slabs and water pools, it'll create like an AFK pool effect. However, what I don't know is if villagers will not only go in this section and like move like real people like me, 
or if they'll end up just like sitting there because the water is not pushing them. Then at the very end, I have this bubble elevator that I honestly don't know how I'm going to get them in. If I connect the water sources, then it just pushes them back. So that's not an option, which means I have to have signs separating it. If I have signs separating it, then the villagers will have to actually AI path into this bubble elevator while a baby first off, and then go through the entire tube without growing up and then not drown. There is a lot of ifs in this thing. And no, I didn't sit here for 25 minutes trying to figure it out either. I sat here for 30, maybe more. But at this point, this is what we'll have to settle for. Honestly, I just hope that the villagers pathing makes it so that they can breathe. So to get the villagers to start the breeding process, I traveled to that old village. I think I'm going to grab the Fletchers first, which later is a really bad idea because like I legit need the book guys and I could have just made Fletchers. The path back to my base was all but complete and I ended up having to mine out a huge chunk of land. Not one time, not, not two times, but three separate occasions. Luckily, I now have quick access to the other village, so I won't have to worry about getting the other villagers back here. Which is why it took way less time to get this little rat from his village all the way back to his new home. Also, ignore the fact that he's living in a dirt hole right now. I just need him to breed so I can make, what are they, the, the farmer guys? I have no idea anymore. With those men and hopefully women off doing their uh, special thing, we need to tick another task off this wall, specifically netherite mining. This is never one of my strong suits, so I was expecting a terrible time until I got my first piece instantly? That's a new one, thanks Microsoft. But it didn't stop there, I got another one in the same line. If my luck continues, I might actually be able to do all of my armor and tools. As I continue to gather up netherite, I want to quickly remind y'all to uh, maybe like the video. It takes two seconds of your time, and you can even unlike it if you please. Maybe while you're down there, you'll subscribe to make my day just that much better? Who knows? Hey, I don't know you. Maybe you're the guy who just wants to watch the entire world burn. To be honest, sometimes those memes are pretty funny. So I guess if that's kind of who you are, I'm all right with that. Anyway, I made the netherite ingots and added them to my armor and tools, all but the shovel because it sucks. But now I have full netherite in my world. One more task off the board. While I'm at base, I had to construct a wall for the newborn villagers to make their way to the breeder. Little Timmy number one was very eager to meet his new home. Maybe a little too eager. But I saved his life with my quick thinking, and all I need to do now is get one more guy in here. Little Timothy, number two, this time, was a little bit harder to get in his new home, but he eventually got the idea. Now, once those men, and hopefully another woman, grow up, they'll actually make more kiddos. Lastly, I need to get these remaining men into the trading hall. If I can trap them, then I can get a decent bit of emeralds for the lads, aka me, because I'm alone. Also, can someone please explain to me this guy's pathing? I seriously cannot understand how dumb this guy has to be. Like, I put beds and workstations in the trading hall, yet this man is considering drowning himself for the vine. I just don't think his AI was quite right. <coughs> uh, anyway, mmm. Day 79, I wanted to replace the potatoes in the villager breeder with carrots. Reason being is I know that carrots actually do work to breed, but I'm not sure if potatoes do. So I went to the close abandoned village to get stuff for the farms, but they didn't even have a single farm. Like not one planter, nothing. I then just flew to the first village where I did all my trading to see if they had any carrots. Lo and behold, one fully grown carrot was there. I multiplied it with the dust of dead people, then planted it in the villager hall to make sure they can breed, which I'm dumb because they still can't yet and future me knows why. To get these men to breed, I need three beds, but not how it's set up right now. I had to create an area for the three beds, two to attract the current villagers, and one for the kit that they were meant to have. The first baby that was born actually went perfectly into the trap. I waited to see if he would come through the other side, but nothing. Turns out little homie was just chilling in the water, so naturally I followed him the entire way to make sure he would make it. And lo and behold, the AI didn't ruin my career and kill the kid. He actually went up the elevator. Now I've officially gotten my first child into this new prison. Nope, I'm not hiding it. I literally made a factory to imprison villagers. That means my last goal is to finish a raid, so I need to get to a pillager outpost. Let me tell you, finding one of these is impossible. Also, real quick, I want to mention that I've played Minecraft for six years. I was looking to start a raid without a bow or any arrows? Did I forget that they added broken neck rhinos into the game or something? What was I thinking? Once I finally found the thing, I was able to grind a level 5 decently quickly. Normally I'm here for days at a time, but if you fly away from them and come back, they'll spawn a lot more. Once I was at tier 5, I headed out of there because I had a plan. All I needed to do was go to the nether, mine for gold, trade it, and get spectral arrows. 
Thankfully, plenty of ruined portals allowed me to enter the nether fairly quickly. Now that I'm here, I went for as much gold as the biomes had to offer. I ended up with around a stack of ingots that I traded to a single piggy man. Also, I want to point out in four trades, I got 12 ender pearls. 12! What in the dream luck was that? Never in my life have I seen this good of luck in just like... I, I'm honestly flabbergasted, speechless, tomfoolery. I don't know what to say anymore. Anyway, I just sat here for a little while and collected what I needed, aka the arrows, and headed back out of there into the world for the fight of a lifetime. I want to point out that the raid I'm about to take on here hits harder than KSI when he's sad that Simon left him. This raid was so much bigger of a task than I expected, and to be honest, this village had like a lag chunk in it, so if you see my FPS drop a few times, just ignore it. Anyway, the important thing about this fight, other than soloing a decent bit of rounds, was this. The amount of trash that was let into this village was way, 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 way too much for me to handle, and I may or may not have let all of the villagers die. Look, okay, we don't need to talk about it. Today has been a hard day, but hear me out. We got totems, right? Totems are what we want from a raid anyway, so did we really fail the challenge? I mean, I can just modify it, as shown by me not editing the sign to say get totems. <laughs> oh my god, wow, I can't believe we completed the entire board. That's crazy. Time for bed. All right, I'm gonna be honest. The next few days are a little random. I don't do a ton of stuff that I would normally do. First thing I wanted to finish off was the pathways. We didn't build one to either of the two villager buildings. But I also realized that I have zero bone meal for that, which meant I had to go and find a soul valley somewhere, so that's always fun, finding stuff in the nether. But once I had the area looking nice, spick and span fantabulous, I'm sure that's a word, I also grew some carrots to force my villagers to have the same. Honestly, I also spent some time getting rich. I really like emeralds, I also like getting books, I like feeling rich, I'm the only one in my world, what am I talking about, I feel like I'm going insane. But halfway through going back and forth between either the old village and my new stuff trading, I realized that my uh, shovel, <laughs> non-existent, still don't have a good one, and I still have one netherite ingot left, so I may as well make a max shovel, which I guess is pretty good because I was already kind of buying the books for fun anyway. Can we just talk about this for a second? How did it take me so many enchants to get something half decent? Like what in the world is my bad luck? Thankfully, I finally have an all maxed out tool set. Do not mention the hoe, they aren't worth it. Okay, so remember that whole I don't know what I'm doing thing? <laughs> it's back. First one I wanted to do was grind fortresses for wither skulls so I could make a beacon at the end of the video. But not only did I fly around the nether for too long and get nothing, I didn't even have a looting on my sword. Like, how dumb do I need to be to try and get wither skulls without looting? I'm seriously starting to doubt my mental capabilities. Okay, so back at base, I wanted to end things off by at least having a farm. I know it can be a bit boring, sure, but I'm gonna be real here. I need to speed up the breeding process if I'm ever gonna finish up the trading hall, which is where I spent the rest of my time trying to max out some stuff. This includes trying to get feather falling, as it's needed in any world, or looting, because I still kind of want to fight the wither even though I literally don't have time for it. Once I had feather falling, I even tested it out, which is something I find fun. Not sure why, but the chance of me ending my own game feels, um, uh, invigorating? Is that a word? Anyway, that's pretty much it. I mean, I survived 100 days in a trailer world. I actually did a lot in these 100 days, so ignore the last few. Also, subscribe to the channel. That helps a lot and makes my day. And if you want to see something cool, check out the merch. I legit wear this stuff every day. I'm currently wearing it now while doing this voiceover. And it's super comfortable. I could probably wrap a dog in it. I don't know why I said that. Also, have a good day. Bye.